The fault that triggered the deadly Napa quake may be more dangerous than originally thought. That's according to an expert with the USGS. Back in 2014, a 6.0 magnitude earthquake happened along the West Napa Fault. One person died, 200 people were hurt, and hundreds of buildings were damaged. Now, at the time of the quake, geologists believed the West Napa Fault was about 35 miles long, starting just south of Napa and spanning up to St. Helena. But new research suggests it's nine miles longer, extending up to Calistoga. Joining us now is the geologist behind the findings, Belle Filibosian with the USGS. Belle, thank you so much for joining us by phone. How did you make this discovery that this fault line is nine miles longer, and were you surprised? Um, it was a little bit of a surprise. Um, we, when we set out to improve the mapping of the fault after the 2014 earthquake, um, we did have access to data that hadn't previously been used to map faults in that area, which was LIDAR data, which is much better for mapping faults in heavily uh, forested or vegetated areas like Napa Valley. So, Bill, what does this mean? It's longer. Does that mean it's capable of an even stronger earthquake? That's that's correct, yes. So the length of a fault is what tells us how big an earthquake it could possibly produce. So prior to this new mapping, the uh, previously recognized section of fault could have um, approximately produced a 6.8 earthquake, and with the additional mapping, that's now extended to 7, which doesn't seem like a large change, but it's actually about twice as much energy released. Wow. So how active is this West Napa Fault? And how does it compare to other well-known fault lines in the Bay Area, like the Hayward Fault, the Loma Prieta Fault Line? Yes, so the Loma Prieta earthquake occurred uh, roughly along the San Andreas Fault, which is probably um, the most active and well-known in California, and the Hayward Fault is similarly active as that. Both of those faults produce significant earthquakes roughly every few hundred years, whereas the West Napa Fault is much less active. So uh, we don't have precise numbers, but we expect approximately every thousand or few thousand years. Okay, so it's more rare along this fault line. You said it was around 35 and now it's we had a nine, so it's about 44 miles long. How long is the Hayward Fault or the Lone Prieta? So how much shorter is this fault line compared to those two? Well, so the San Andreas Fault actually stretches all the way from Southern California all the way up to Cape Mendocino. So down by the Salton Sea to Cape Mendocino. So it's very, very long, hundreds of miles long, but um, we it's not necessarily ever um, going to have a single earthquake that ruptures the entire thing. If it did, that would be likely above a magnitude 8. The Hayward Fault is a little bit shorter than that. It's um, the section in the Bay, Bay Area um, is more similar to the West Napa Fault, so the size of earthquakes that the Bay Air, that the Hayward Fault could produce are more similar to the West Napa Fault, a, a little bit longer. Yeah, sorry, I should correct myself. The San Andreas Fault created the Loma Prieta earthquake in 1989. Okay, Belle, this is so interesting. Uh, the research is fascinating. Uh, Belle Filibosian, geologist with USGS, thank you so much for taking the time with us tonight.